Hello and welcome to part 14 of the series on computer networks. I hope you have watched the previous parts of this series. If not, the links are given in the description. You can always go and check them out. So today's topic of discussion is email and its protocols. We'll begin with a brief discussion on emails and its various protocols. And finally, we'll wind up with how email actually works. So let us try to understand what email is at the very beginning. So what is email? So it is a method of exchanging messages and data between people using electronic devices. So with it is a method with the help of which we can exchange messages. Messages means text messages and along with messages, we can also send data like images, videos or various other things which can be sent electronically. So before email was there, people used to send letters and depending on the efficiency of post offices, the letter used to take a lot of time in going from the sender to the receiver. But with the introduction of email, this process has become very much easier and smoother now. So let us go to some of the email service providers. They are as follows. So the most popular one is Gmail. It is by Google. Next, Yahoo Mail is also one of the most popular email service provider. Then iCloud, iCloud is by Apple. And next, Outlook, it's by Microsoft. And Rediff, Mail is also there. So these are some of the typical and popular email service providers. Beyond this also various email providers are there, but these are some of the most popular email service providers. Next, let us try to understand the email protocols. The email protocols will give us the mechanism in which email works. So what are the protocols available in emails? The protocols are SMTP, which stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Next is POP, which stands for Post Office Protocol. And finally, IMAP or Internet Message Access Protocol. So let's try to look into them one by one. So at first, we will look into SMTP or simple mail transfer protocol. At the beginning, I'll be explaining with you about SMTP with the help of an animated diagram. And after that, we'll go to the text part. So let's say we want to send a message to a receiver. So at first, what we will do, we will compose the message. And after we click on the send button, this is the send button, then what will happen? Let us see. So this is the sender node. So what we will do, we will compose the message and we will click on the send button. As we click on the send button, a protocol will come which is SMTP. So the main work of SMTP is to send the message, is used for sending the message to the recipient. So what it will do? From the sender node, the message will travel to the SMTP server. So for sending, which protocol is used? The protocol used for sending is SMTP. So remember, when we send messages from the sender to the receiver, the messages will go with the help of a protocol named SMTP. So from the SMTP server, the message will go to the recipient's email server. This is the recipient's email server. Suppose uh, you are using the service provider of Gmail. So at first the message will go to Gmail server and the receiver has an email address of Yahoo. So let's say this is the email server of Yahoo. So what will happen? The at first, the message will go to your email server, that means Gmail server. And after that, from the Gmail server, it will go to the recipient's email server. Going from your node to your email server and then further to the recipient's email server is done with the help of SMTP. That means it takes the complete responsibility of sending the email. So after it reaches your email server, the message will travel to the recipient's email server and it will get stored there. So this is the main work of SMTP. So is it clear? I hope it is clear. And now let us try to go to the theory part. So it is a protocol used for sending email across the 
internet. So for the purpose of sending, we'll use the protocol SMTP. So it can be remembered by the phrase send mail to people. This is not the full form of SMTP, but just for remembering purpose, you can use this acronym send mail to people. Then it works on the following ports. So for these protocols to work, it requires certain ports. The ports in which SMTP works are port 25. It is the default non-encrypted port. If SMTP work is working on port 25, then your data will go in a non-encrypted format. Means it will go in the format in which you have sent it. That means non-encrypted port means it is an unsecure form of communication if the communication happens through port 25. And for encrypted communication, if you want encrypted communication, the port number 465 is used. Let's go to the next protocol, which is your POP or post office protocol. So let's try to understand post office protocol. Let's say we have a node. This is the receiver node. At first, SMTP was used with the sender node, but POP will, is used with the receiver node. Now, this is the recipient's email server. Now, when the recipient, suppose you have sent an email to your friend, then you are the sender and your friend is the receiver. When the receiver will log in to his email account, then what will happen? The email was already stored in the recipient's email server as we have seen in the last protocol. Then from the recipient's email server, that email will come to the receiver node. That means the email will now go to your friend. But if we are using POP protocol and the latest version is POP3. So if we are using the POP protocol, then after the message comes from the recipient's email server, the message will get deleted from the recipient's email server. That means if you want to access the same email from a different device or from a different location, you cannot do it. That means in case of POP protocol, POP protocol is used for what? For receiving emails. But only one receiver can access it at one time. Okay. If you download the message once, then it cannot be accessed again from a different location. So it defines the rules about receiving emails from a remote server to a local email client. So this is the remote server, this is the recipient's email server and from there it will get, uh, it will come to the receiver node. So it makes it possible for the users to download their received email messages from recipient's email server and access them. So with the help of this protocol, you can download the emails which are present at your email server. Okay, so if your friends email was at the rate of gmail.com and your email server is at yahoo then from yahoo server you need to download your message and it is facilitated with the help of post office protocol so it is suitable if you are accessing the emails using a single application or from a single location if you want to access your emails only from a single location then the post office protocol is basically used. So it works on two ports, 110 and 995. 110 is for non-encrypted communication and 995 is for encrypted communication. Let's go to the last protocol, which is IMAP or Internet Message Access Protocols. So let's say this is one node, receiver node one, this is receiver node two. Suppose you, uh, you have a business and your email account is managed by different persons. So let's say you have two computers in which the emails are checked, the same email. So let's say your email address is abc at the rate of yahoo.com. For opening that email, let's say you have two computers. So I'm saying one computer is receiver node one and the other is receiver node Two. So the emails will come and it will be stored at where? It will be stored at the recipient's email server. That means at your email server. After that, when let's say 
at first the receiver node 1 logs in into his email account after that what will happen from the recipient's email server the message will get downloaded to the receiver node 1 remember in case of imap protocol even after the message goes to the receiver node 1 the message will still be backed up at the recipient's email server means after one receiver downloads the email it will still be backed up at the recipient's email server that means it will still be there at the recipient's email server so now if the receiver node so it will happen with the help of imap now if the receiver node 2 will log in into the same email account so these two are different computers then also he will be able to receive the message and it is done with the help of imap so remember the work of pop and imap are the same with the difference that if you are accessing only on a single message uh, machine then pop is recommended and otherwise imap is recommended for multiple machines so it is used to access emails on a remote web server and download them to a local client so these are local clients so the primary difference between imap and pop is that with the help of imap multiple clients can access the emails on multiple applications and multiple locations so you can access them on multiple devices on multiple applications and on multiple locations let's say you want to access your email account in your computer also and in your mobile app also the same email account then imap is used so it works on two ports 143 for non-encrypted communication and 993 for encrypted communication now let us go to the entire working of email so both the things will be clubbed here so this is the sender node this is the receiver node this is the smtp server that means uh, this is the server which is used for sending emails and so what will happen at first the sender will log in into his system and compose the message and click on send as soon as the sender clicks on send the message will travel from the sender node to the smtp server then from the smtp server so it is it will be done you using which protocol it will be done using smtp protocol after that what will happen the message is now stored at SMTP server. From the SMTP server, it will come to the recipient's email server. So the message will go to the recipient's email server. Now, this is the receiver node. When the receiver will log in into his system, what will happen? The message which is stored at the recipient's email server will come from the recipient's email server to the receiver node and it will be done either with the help of pop3 or imap based on whatever protocol is used i hope email and its protocols are clear thank you very much